said, today is very much about running through how to manage a credit report. Um, I don't know how much you guys do or don't know about credit and credit reporting, but as Darren mentioned, it's something that's really important. Um, and again, like he said, I wish that the things that I know now, I knew when I was in credit, I wouldn't have made so many mistakes. Um, so just to give you a little bit of an intro about me, first of all, um, some of you managed to meet me on the last course that we did, but uh, my name's Nancy Lacane. Um, I'm a trainer, um, I'm an author, so I've, I've um, written a book called The House, which I think some of you might actually have, and um, this, the, the book The House, it touches on a little bit to do with finance and credit as well in the tips at the back. Um, I'm a general entrepreneur as well, I can't even say it today, um, property investor, and I like to consider myself now to be a credit expert, which is why I'm doing this course for you today, okay? Um, as mentioned, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask those as we go through or put those in the chat. So, let's keep going. So as a bit of an agenda today, what I want to cover is first of all what your credit report is. So I'm just going to talk through about what exactly a credit report is um, and what it's for. Um, also the, the reasons why you need good credit. Um, again, we've kind of touched on some of those already, but I'm just going to go into a bit more detail. Um, I want to talk a bit about good versus bad as well and talk a bit about some of the myths that people have with reference to credit. Um, I say that because growing up, I had quite a lot of advice from people which was incorrect when it comes to credit. So I just kind of want to talk about some of those just in case you've been given the same advice from people as well and to set you straight. Um, I want to talk a bit about the credit report itself. So we're going to look at um, an actual report and um, some of the key areas on it. Um, and then finally, I just want to talk a bit about your credit report, your credit score, how to improve that and the next steps of what you can do, okay? So let's start off then just by talking about what your credit report is. So um, essentially, a credit report is um, a paper or online profile which lists everything to do with your borrowing, um, your addresses, um, if you've got things like defaults on your account and also your payment activity. Um, when I talk about things like defaults and CCJs, I'm going to go into a bit more detail about that later. So don't worry too much if you're not sure what those mean. Um, but basically, so you get a whole report which has all the information on it. And off the back of that report, you're given a credit score. So um, you want to have your credit score as high as possible. And the reason you want to do that, which I kind of cover on the next slide, is just so that you've got more access to credit overall. Um, in order for you to get your credit score, you would need to contact one of the core credit reference agencies. So um, some of the most popular ones, I mean, there's quite a few now, but some of the most popular ones are Equifax, Experian, ClearScore and Credit Karma. Um, and literally anybody can get access to those. Some of them are chargeable and some are free. Um, and my, my favorite, I would say, is probably Equifax, but that is a chargeable one, although they do do a free trial. Um, and I think my second favorite now is Credit Karma, which you can download an app and just put your details in and it will give you all the information free of charge, okay? So why do you need good credit is the question. So the main reason, and again, I kind of touched on this when we did our last session about property, but if you know that you don't have cash and you need to get access to funds, getting credit is going to be the easiest way for you to do that. And um, you, want to, you want to get access to funds mainly if you know that there's things that you need to purchase or there's investments that you want to make. Um, and so if you have good credit, then you're much more likely to be able to get access to those funds. So the reason the score is so important is because what it does is for those banks or borrowers that you're trying to get this money from, the credit report tells them how likely you are to pay back. So what it does is it paints a picture about who you are and your spending history and, you know, how likely you are to, to pay back, as I mentioned. So when um, applying for things like loans, mortgages, credit cards, overdrafts, 
your bank will first look at your score. And as an example, they might say, okay, we can see that this person has paid all of their bills for the last three years on time. Therefore, I know that if I borrow them some money, they're gonna pay me on time. Therefore, off the back of that, the amount they give you would be higher than somebody who had a lower credit score. And also um, the interest rate that you get would be a lot better than somebody who's got a low credit score. It, it just means to them that you're a low risk person. And that's really where you want to try and be um, throughout your life if, if you can. Um, so I just, I just kind of made a point. Was there a question coming through? And I thought someone had a quest question there. Um, I just wanted to make the point, really, because um, a lot of people say, you know, should we even be taking up debts at all? You know, you get a lot of advice from people who say um, the idea should be that we shouldn't have any debts and we should all pay our debts off. And although that's not necessarily um, incorrect information, I just really want you to understand that there's two types of debt. So you've got good debts. Um, and good debts, I'll talk about this on the next slide, but you've got good debts and you've got bad debts, okay? So when it comes down to borrowing, you do want to try and borrow for the right reasons, um, which will therefore make those good debts, okay? But I'll explain a little bit more on the next slide. So let's talk about good debt versus bad debt. So the very first thing then is, if you're thinking about bad debt, Bad debt is basically where you're borrowing something, mainly to maintain a lifestyle of some kind. But essentially what it does is it takes money out of your pocket. So it means that you're having to pay something back every month um, out of your own pocket. So as an example, things like credit card debt could be seen as bad. Personal loans can be seen as bad. Car finance, overdrafts, these things can be seen as bad, okay? Um, and then you've got your good debts. So good debts are basically used um, to invest in something for a future goal that essentially will put money in your pocket. So you're thinking about things like mortgages, that's gonna, um, a mortgage for an investment, that's gonna put money in your pocket at some point and so can be seen as a good debt. Um, business loans, if you've taken out a loan for your business, knowing that you're trying to grow your business, then essentially that's going to bring money back into you, which makes it a good debt. And things like education loans or training loans are often listed down as good debts as well. Now, I will say with, with both of these, debt is all about how you manage it. And I could challenge probably things on both sides of this coin. So I could say, you know, something like a personal loan could probably be used to be a good debt or something like um, an education loan, um, you know, a student loan, just say, that might ne not necessarily be a good debt. Um, if maybe, I don't know, you dropped out of uni or something like that afterwards. So everything is a little bit relative, but the general consensus is if it puts money in your pocket, it's a good debt. And if it takes money out your pocket, it's a bad debt, okay? So, what I want to do is just have a little play around with you guys and just see if you understood what I said. And um, I'm going to put up a couple of scenarios on the board and I'm going to read them out. And I just want you to type in the chat whether you think they are a good debt or a bad debt. OK, so I'm going to start with this one. So this one says I went into my overdraft. So the overdraft is where I'm getting the money from to buy myself and my partner a new pair of Louboutins. Do you think that is a good debt or do you think that is a bad debt? So just either say it or type it in the chat. Okay, so we've got a bad debt from T-Bands. Bad, yep. Okay, anyone else miff? <laughs> bad debt, bad debt, okay. So, all right, so yep. You'll be correct with that, okay? That's a bad debt, okay? And I, I think you've all understood that the reason that's a bad debt is because it's taking money out of your pocket, okay? So you're borrowing to pay for something that you can't essentially afford, okay? So that is a bad debt. Now let's try the next one. So the scenario, 
I went into holiday to Dubai. So I booked it on my credit card. So credit cards where you're getting the money from. And I put all my holiday spending on my credit card too. Is that a good debt or is it a bad debt? Who, who thinks it's a good or a bad debt? Or if we, oh, have you guys already written in there? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, so Mo, Mo says it's a good debt. So, Mo, what's your reason why you think it might be a good debt? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Mo, Mo's changed. Okay. All right, cool. So, so, yeah, you're right. You're right. So, this is also a, a bad debt. Okay. Um, and I don't want you to look at this and think, oh, no, you know, I can't have fun with my life. Um, everything's a debt. But this is this is a bad debt, okay? Because, again, you're taking money from your credit card to do something that is not putting money back in your pocket, okay? So, um, so that is a bad debt. And um, I'll do two more. So let's do this one. So um, I bought a house with a mortgage to rent out. My mortgage costs five hundred pounds a month, and my tenants pay me one thousand pounds a month. Is this a good debt or a bad debt? Yeah. So John says good. T Van says good. Yep. Tracy says good. Yep. Everyone's saying good, good. And yeah, you would be correct with that. It is a good debt. Where's my little flying thing here? There we go. It's a good debt, okay? So it's a good debt, obviously, because it's putting money in your pocket, okay? So every month you're making £500 from that borrowing, and that is um, obviously a positive thing. All right, the last one I'm going to do is this one here, okay? So the scenario, um, I bought a nearly new convertible Bentley on car finance. So car finance is where the money's coming from. I love the car, but I drive it a few times a week. Say, say that again. Or did someone say something? No, okay. Um, I love the car, but I only drive it a few times a week as I commute on the train to work. Is this a good debt or a bad debt? Bad. Okay. So I think, I think you guys are getting, getting the message here. Right, only impressing the parking space. <laughs> so yeah, so you're right with that. Um, so I did want to share a story with you, okay? So I probably shouldn't because it kind of goes against what I'm saying a little bit here. But um, so you all know David, right? You all know David. Um, around Christmas time, or maybe it was just before Christmas, actually, I bumped into David in um, North London somewhere. And um, he came in this new, lovely, beautiful, convertible C-class as he did. And, um, and I looked at David's car, and then I looked at my car, and then I looked back at David's car, and I thought to myself, I need to upgrade my car. <laughs> I need to upgrade my car. So, um, so off the back of that, I went off, and I went and bought myself a new car. So do you think that that was a good debt, or do you think that was a bad debt? Okay. Oh, so we got... Okay, so Jennifer says, good. So why do you think that's a good, a good debt, Jennifer? Oh, that's a good, it's okay. How long did you have that old car for? So I had that, the old car for about, about six years, something like that. So it was quite a long time. Now, now what, I, what I will say off the get-go, good for yourself, but overall bad, okay? Yeah, so Mo, I would probably agree with that. So overall, it's a, it's a bad debt, okay? I'm still forking out money to buy something which is not necessarily putting money in my pocket. However, I just wanted to share with you that the reason how I justified it to myself is um, somebody recently had told me about this new app, which was called Churro. Um, and apparently you can rent your car on this new app, um, rent it out per day. And so what I ended up doing is I put my car on Churro, um, learning that if I just rent my car out for three days in a month, it actually pays for my higher purchase, which is how I did the, the car finance. And if I rent it out for anything longer than that, I'm actually making a profit. So I thought, well, OK, if I can make money off the car, it's now turned from a bad debt into a good one. 
So, so the point or the reason why I say the story is um, there's lots of scenarios where you can turn a good debt into a bad debt and vice versa. Just know that debt is relative, okay? Um, use it wisely. And um, as we go on, you know, I mean, it's probably another course for another day. But what you really want to do is you want to make sure that the, the investments that you do. So, for example, that £500 that I might have made from my rental income. I want to start using stuff like that to pay for my holiday in Dubai and pay for, um, you know, my, what, what else did I get? My Louboutins and stuff like that. You know, that's where you want to get yourself to, okay? Where it's not your money, it's the money that you make that pays for your luxuries, okay?